Welcome again, everybody. We are Heat Smart Tompkins. Uh, we are a community nonprofit dedicated to outreach and education. We do not make any money off of any sales of heat pumps or home energy improvements. Our goal is just to um, reduce energy use and make people more comfortable and happy in their homes and also oftentimes to save you money on your energy bills uh, when that's possible, which it often is. Um, so we believe that the recommendations of the Heat Smart program will save money, lead to comfortable, healthy homes, and climate solutions that help everybody. Heat Smart is an idea that started in Tompkins County. Um, my co-director, Jonathan Comstock, started Heat Smart a few years back after starting something called Solar Tompkins, which was a big solarized program that was so successful. They decided they didn't need to promote solar energy in Tompkins County that much anymore, and, and they started the Heat Smart program. Um, the idea was so great that it caught on and is now funded by NYSERDA, a state agency, and there are 15 Heat Smart or Clean Heating and Cooling programs across New York State. And some of you um, I know are not from the Tompkins County, or we now cover Shimon County as well, um, but are from some of the surrounding areas and are served by other heat smart programs. So welcome to all of you as well. Okay, so we do, we remove barriers to taking action because these um, are difficult decisions and sometimes people need a little help to take action in their homes. So what we do is we provide transparency for costs and quality issues. Uh, we provide accessible information about the different options. This webinar series is part of that. And hopefully that generates confidence in, in folks to be able to move forward with their own decision making. Um, so in this time of COVID-19, we're changing our practices. We like to have community meetings um, in churches and town halls and libraries all across the region and meet people face to face. But we can't do that right now. So we are holding these webinars. We encourage people to use our website as much as possible. And we're putting up new information there every day. So keep checking back for more. And if there's not something there that you want, get in touch with us and we can also talk to you, are very happy to talk to you on the phone. Um, we are trying to get some virtual home tours up because part of our program has been uh, opening, asking people to open their homes uh, so that people can see energy systems installed in place and how they work. Um, and that's a really fun part of what we do, and we can't do that right now. Um, so we're trying to do those virtually. And our installer partners are doing remote assessments. Normally, you would sign up for HeatSmart and ask which installers you wanted to come and visit you and take a look at your home and talk to you about your home energy. And so our installers are all doing that, but they're doing it through phone calls, um, photographs, looking at energy bills and other remote methods um, to meet the standards that are required um, during the pause. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm now gonna turn this meeting over to our main event, which is Matt Dennis from Halco Energy. So Matt, take it away. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks for uh, thanks for being here. Um, <clears throat> let's make sure we uh, we tested this yesterday. Let's make sure it's going to work. <clears throat> okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Matt Dennis. I'm an energy advisor with Halco Energy, and um, I'm here to present our uh, our case study here. Um, I'm going to start out uh, telling you a little bit about Halco and what we do. Uh, we've been in business since 1984. Uh, we're a full uh, service uh, home energy contractor. We serve 23 counties throughout uh, central New York, upstate, uh, and uh, the Finger Lakes. Uh, we offer everything from HVAC, plumbing, electric, um, waterproofing, uh, basement waterproofing, water conditioning, insulation, spray foam insulation, cellulose, uh, indoor air quality, uh, healthy home solutions, uh, air source, ground source, heat pumps, solar, and then a lot more um, from there. Uh, we, we truly uh, are a one-stop shop. Uh, our motto is, yes, we do that. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty blanket statement because uh, if you look at all of our services that we offer, 
um, we, uh, we, we can pretty much cover you 100% uh, no matter what. Um, we, uh, we've been with the HeatSmart Tompkins program from the beginning. Uh, we're part of uh, two other uh, HeatSmart programs um, throughout, the, uh, throughout our service area. Um, and the reason for that is because um, what HALCO offers uh, in that, that, that picture I showed you is um, you know, a, a comprehensive solution to, to make your home as energy efficient as possible, as comfortable as possible, and reduce um, you know, your, your carbon consumptions which is really what HeatSmart is all about. So it just kind of made sense um, that we, you know, we kind of go hand in hand. Um, and, uh, you know, you know, through the HeatSmart Tompkins program over the years, we've been able to make a, a, a lot of positive um, uh, changes for folks in their homes and, and really, you know, take care of the issues that they may have. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we have, um, we're, we're very proud of our customer service uh, that we offer. So Halco is uh, open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And that's not a, it's not just a boast, that's legitimate. If you were to call us at 2 a.m. on Sunday morning, a real life person at our office will answer the phone. Um, so we're always going to be available to you uh, no matter what. Um, uh, our service department is, is staffed um, seven days a week from 7 a.m. till 9 p.m. Those are our regular hours. Um, so if you do need service on something, you can give us a call and, uh, you know, we can come out and see you on a Saturday or a Sunday or after hours because um, not, not everybody is, is con you, know, you know, conveniently available eight to five. Monday through Friday. Uh, we're fully insured uh, with liability, workers' comp, uh, pollution insurance, and an umbrella policy that covers everything in between. And uh, we're very proud of what our customers have to say about us. If you go to uh, our website, you'll find right now about 600 um, positive Google reviews. Um, we maintain a near five-star rating uh, with Google. And um, if you go on our own website, where we've been collecting reviews for many, many, many years, uh, you'll find um, over 8,000 of them from folks that have, uh, that have used our services and are very happy with us. About 1,500 of them are strictly from Tompkins County. So you can actually go in and type in your, um, your zip code and see where, uh, uh, where um, your, your neighbors uh, have worked with, uh, with Halco. In addition, uh, we do deal with all the NYSERDA um, rebate programs, all the grant programs, and then we have um, a variety of different financing options as well. And depending on uh, you know, your qualifications as far as you know, income levels and such, um, we can help you navigate the waters of the, the paperwork with all those uh, uh, grants that are available. So <clears throat> this is our case study. Um, this is the home of Frank and Kathy Darrow uh, out in Spencer. Technically it's Danby, but it's a Spencer address. Uh, it's a 2,500 foot um, uh, 1880s farmhouse um, and um, a lot of original character to this house um, and they didn't build them very efficient back then so we had to make some, uh, some modifications to make them work. Uh, Frank and Kathy were hoping to, um, you know, reduce, uh, initially reduce their, their reliance on oil. We were eventually able to eliminate it entirely uh, and make the home more comfortable in the summer and the winter months. Uh, some of the issues that we ran into when we, uh, when I got to the house is, uh, you know, got down to the basement and there was a, a little stream that ran right down the middle of the basement. Um, uh, the basement had had uh, water issues for many, many years. Uh, and for a long time, it just kind of, they just, they dealt with it for, for many years because uh, it's just kind of the way it was. Um, uh, but instead uh, of just dealing with it, uh, you know, we, we offered up a solution. Um, they originally contacted us to look at heat pump options, but when we got there, the, um, you know, you know, there's this, a wet basement is not just a comfort issue, it's a health and safety issue because wet basements uh, breed molds and mildews and uh, lead to poor indoor air quality. So we had to put in a full basement waterproofing system, which meant a perimeter drain system in the basement, um, a sump pump with a battery backup, um, and what the... Uh, Fun story about the battery backup. When our electrician was there working, uh, he had to kill the power of the house. And the battery backup was working fantastic the entire time. Um, so much so that the alarm was driving crazy because we had to listen to it all. Uh, but it worked great. We installed the Santa Dry basement air filtration system. 
uh, which not only kept, keeps the basement dry, it treats the air quality of the house. Um, and we insulated the, um, the basement walls um, because you know, we've got a major, huge thermal mass in the basement uh, uh, that led to air leakage uh, as well as um, uh, cold basement. So some before and after pictures mm -hmm. here. We have a, this uh, on, the, on the left side here is the um, before picture that we took. This is water. This is the, uh, the, the, the trench in the basement here. This is where the water collected and went to a sump pump to just deal with it. This is all wet, uh, just spilt over. The walls are leaking. Water is a, is a constant problem with this house. And this is the after. Um, now the, the oil tank does go away. Uh, it just hadn't been taken out by the time this picture was taken. Um, but you can see insulated the walls, the rim joists, um, that this is now gone because there's a perimeter drain underneath this the concrete. So it's all nice, neat, and dry. Before this was the sump pump, which everything just kind of made its way into the corner and kind of went away. And this is the, the new properly sealed sump pump battery backup and then the air filtration system. Some pictures of the, uh, you know, we replaced, this is the Bilco door that had to be replaced because as you can see, that's not doing anybody any favors from a, from a uh, uh, air sealing and insulation perspective. And so another shot of the uh, behind the water, I'm um, sorry, behind the oil tank there. Uh, <clears throat> Now, uh, we, we're all about giving uh, credit where credit is due. Snug Planet was in this house a few years prior to us coming in to look at the, uh, the heat pumps. The um, uh, Snug had come in in 2017 and put in a, uh, some crawl space insulation, uh, sealed up the crawl space, and then sealed up uh, the attic. Uh, at the time, they weren't offering solutions for, for basement waterproofing, so they took care of the attic and the um, crawl space. Uh, the results of, uh, of the basement project is uh, we, we reduced the air leakage by nearly 40%. And that's something that, that kind of gets overlooked. Uh, when you're trying to tighten, tighten up a home to make it as efficient as possible, you need to look at the basement because they are major, major uh, sources of air leakage uh, coming through a basement, especially an old uh, stone foundation. Um, a lot of these old homes that have stone foundations that the air just blast in and then uh, and then comes back out thus uh, making the house drafty and the floor is cold so we had to take care of all that so the house is much more comfortable the basement is dry and a lot safer and it's just a uh, you know a major reason why it doesn't make sense to to put a high quality high efficient heating system in a house that's just drafty and leaky or wet so you got to look at the, the whole house approach uh, switching to the um, the heat pump system. So the the conversation we originally had was to just get away from the oil, and we uh, we looked at a dual fuel system. We looked at an air source system, and in the at the end um, we settled on uh, you know a high efficient ground source heat pump. Some of the challenges we ran into: uh, it's an oil furnace, uh, an electric water heater was the ex existing equipment, low ceilings, so there were some challenges getting, um, you know, working in the area. I couldn't. I'm, I'm six one. I couldn't stand up straight um, in the basement very well, so we had some challenges there. Uh, and then also a lot of the ductwork was undersized, and the electrical service in the home was um, also uh, not properly sized. <clears throat> so we had to address that. So problems and solutions. Put in a Geostar Sycamore variable speed, high efficient ground source heat pump system. Uh, we corrected the duct work um, and duct connections. Uh, the heat pump water heater took care, uh, and that was a snug project. They took care of that with the insulation, so that was already there. And uh, we installed a 200 amp uh, electrical service upgrade. So um, because we are licensed electricians, um, we took care of, we can take care of all the solutions, uh, all the problems uh, in the house you know, taken care of under one roof. Some picture of the, uh, of the heat pump, and it was a five ton unit. Um, we had to mount it horizontally, which is, um, you know, not a standard application, but in situations where basements are short, you know, we have to, they, they make the unit like this so it can be laid on its side and not having to stand upright. <clears throat> the oil furnace, new equipment, 
uh, all this shiny duct work, this is all new. So that's a, another thing to keep in mind when you're putting in a, a heat pump, you're moving a lot more air. So when you're taking out a, a, con a conventional um, fossil fuel furnace, uh, you tend to have to make some, some duct modifications to move that, uh, that, that higher rate of airflow. Um, otherwise, uh, you're, you're going to have a, a, a massive challenge. So um, it, it was literally about three times the amount of airflow, which means we needed to basically upsize these, this duct work quite a bit. Uh, I don't have a before picture, unfortunately, but this is the after picture of the loop field insulation. Um, they have, uh, the Daros have a, a meadow in the back here that just kind of uh, hangs out and does its thing. So that's where we put it. Loop field's back there. Uh, we were able to trench back into the house and turn and then come in through the basement foundation over here. Um, I, uh, this was about a, almost a year ago. Um, and now it's, uh, should be covering grass by now. And again, uh, credit where credit is due, Snug put in a heat pump water heater, uh, which would be a solution that I also would have recommended, uh, removing uh, and replacing the existing electric water heater here. The electrical service, as I mentioned, uh, this was what we came across and um, it was about 100 amp service and it was strong, very inadequate for what it needed. It was actually overloaded and out of code. Um, so we had to take care of all that. So that was all torn out. We put in a proper 200 amp service and um, got everything uh, uh, to code for them. Results again, uh, happy homeowners. Uh, no more oil, we got rid of the oil entirely comfortable even heat um, the uh, now have air conditioning for the first time ever um, clean heating and cooling and massive massive carbon reductions and I'll be able to show you that in a, uh, in a, in a second here um, <clears throat> some uh, some costs now uh, to keep in mind this this was sort of an atypical solution so I kind of tried to break it down to give you an idea of some of the potential costs this was a sizable project because um, there was a there was a lot more to it than uh, than not every house is going to need that. Some houses are are more straightforward. Some houses are are, are pretty um, involved. But you can see where the costs broke down. Um, and even if you were to add that up, um, you can do the math and you can see in a second why even all that um, improvements were major savings. Before uh, anything was done, they were going through about twenty two hundred gallons of oil per year. That's crazy. At three dollars a gallon that's sixty six hundred bucks a year just to heat your house um, it wasn't even a good heat <laughs> um, but it was just to heat um, which equated to almost fifty thousand pounds of, of uh, co2 per year after the words we get rid of the oil oil's gone there's no products of combustion in the house at all uh, so we were, were eliminated all the issues um, that could have come with with carbon monoxide <clears throat> and um, the operating costs are about, uh, the projected operating costs um, are uh, about almost 12,000 kilowatt hours of electricity at 12 cents a kilowatt hour, it's about 1400 bucks. Uh, it's actually better than that. Um, we do have some data on the, the monitoring system that was put in with the geo system. Uh, and it actually shows that the, uh, the cost of operation is actually significantly less than that. This was a projected um, simple calculation based off of the initial consumption. So it's actually a lot better than that. Um, it'll actually be, end up being only about $800 a year. Uh, zero pounds of uh, CO2, which is cool. And uh, over the course of a 25 year lifespan, uh, which is common with geothermal, that's uh, 1.23 million pounds of uh, CO2 over the next 25 years, which um, is a lot of, uh, that's, that's a lot of cars off the road. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> lastly, uh, with the, um, with all these improvements that have been made, uh, uh, the house qualifies for a very high performing um, energy efficient home, even though it's a you know, uh, an 1880s farm home. We, uh, we work with an outfit uh, called Pearl, which does uh, home energy certifications. And uh, very few homes actually qualify for a high rated platinum level home, which is the top upper echelon. Only about 3% of all homes qualify for that rating. And um, 
a lot of new homes don't even qualify for that. And we were able to bring this, this, this older home into the 21st century and actually make a very high performing home. And as such, um, they are only one of um, a dozen uh, pearl platinum rated homes in all of New York State. Um, and just a little pat on our own, on, on, on the back of Halco, um, those a dozen homes are all Halco projects. So, uh, and they're all comprehensive um, home energy projects. So it just shows that when you put something together like this, not only is it just a, yes, um, the house is more efficient, the house is going to be uh, less costly to operate, but uh, we can prove it. Uh, and we can provide certification, independent third-party certification to know that the investment that you've made in your home um, uh, is, is recognized. Uh, and, and that can be used, um, you know, if and when you sell the home, uh, just to be able to show, hey, the house is efficient. I've got this certification. It's a legal addendum. It has to be taken into consideration. <clears throat> We do have a video, unfortunately, um, videos don't play very well over Zoom, um, but it, we, you know, we did have a, a testimonial with, with Kathy, um, but unfortunately it's not transferring very well. So uh, we're gonna skip that. And uh, I wanna say thank you uh, to uh, Frank and Kathy for, uh, for, for contacting Helco and bringing, them, uh, bringing us into their home and, and giving us an opportunity to, to make their little part of, of the world better. Um, and hopefully, um, you know, project that into, you know, the, the, the grand scheme and so we can make more folks uh, homes more efficient and comfortable. And I want to thank everybody on the Zoom call for taking the time out of their day and their, their lunch hour to, uh, to sit and, and listen to me ramble on. And hopefully, um, if you have any questions, very happy to answer. And hopefully we can, uh, we can make a, a difference for you. And uh, I thank you. Thank you so much, Matt. What a great presentation. I found, I don't know about everybody else, but I definitely found myself jealous of this homeowner. Some of those improvements <laughs> still need to happen, have, happen in my house. In fact, does I think- remind, Does it remind you of anything, Lisa? Matt was kind of giving me the side eye when he was talking <laughs> about certain issues in the basement because he's been in the basement of my house, which we won't talk about anymore right now. But uh, this reminds me of, uh, what's on my to-do list. Okay, so um, let's see. A quick speed through Matt's presentation. <laughs> I've never this seen the, speed round. the Geostar unit on its side like that. I didn't know it could do that. So that was exciting. So um, Halco is one of our four wonderful vetted installer partners. We have Halco and Snug Planet, who also worked on this same house, as Matt mentioned a couple times, who are whole home um, in, um, contractors who do insulation, um, heating, and uh, solar panels, all kinds of different things. Um, and they work closely together. And then we also have two wonderful installer partners who are heat pump specialists. Uh, Daily Geothermal, they do electric and plumbing as well, but um, they're, they're heat pump specialists and NP Environmental who are exclusive heat pump installers. So um, all of our partners are just wonderful and I uh, hope you've got to see some of the other case studies as well as this one. We have NP Environmental presenting a hydronic geosystem on Thursday's webinar and daily and um, Snug Planet's webinars are now available for viewing on our website. If you missed those last week, please uh, check them out. Really interesting to see these different projects that they've done. Um, so we work on something called enrollments and we urge you to get started if you're thinking about doing something in your home and one of these, one or more of the contractors that are our partners are interesting to you. The first step is to enroll on our website, heatsmarttompkins.org, fill out a short survey, and select one or more of our installer partners. They will follow up with you at a time that's convenient for you. They will um, communicate with you about doing an assessment of your home's needs and what they would offer you. Um, these home assessments are absolutely free and no obligation to you whatsoever, so there's really no downside. And then by going through the Heat Smart program, Jonathan and I become a resource for you. You can call us anytime with questions or concerns as you go through the process from enrollment through installation, which 
some people are ready right now and roll and then they get a proposal and they book the job and a month or two from now may have a new system. And some people are thinking about it now, but maybe a year or two or several years away from getting that work done. Regardless of which you are, we en encourage you to enroll with us. So that's our webinar. Thank you so much for listening. We're going to go to questions and answers now. You can unmute yourself and ask a question, um, or you can um, type a question into the chat and I will read it. Before that, I just want to show you that um, I know some of you are not from Tompkins County or Shemang, but are, have joined us from other areas of New York. And um, here's the contact information for the folks in your area. If, when you registered for the webinar, you identified where you lived. So I will give those leads on to the um, Heat Smart programs for the appropriate area where you live. But just wanted you to see that um, the, this is the contact information if you want to reach out to them. Okay. So that's our presentation right on time here at 12.30. And um, let's go to your questions. I, there were already some in the chat. Um, so Lauren wanted to know if Halco did the water drainage system in the basement. And I did answer that. Yes, that's correct. Right, Matt? And she yes, yes, said, yes. Lauren said, it's great to have contractors that can do it all. Mm -hmm. And I think we agree. Um, Adam asked, is the additional airflow required due to the lower temperature? I think he's talking about the duct upgrade that you had to do. Yeah, so that's that's part of it. Um, what it is, it's 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 uh, the air change is uh, the air turns over a lot more often uh, because we're we're removing a higher volume of air. Um, but uh, yeah, temperature change is part of it. So if you think about it, um, think about blowing into a straw versus blowing into a toilet paper tube. Um, the pressures uh, the pressures vary a bit when you're when you're changing that. So if you're trying to blow more air through that straw. Your cheeks puff up real, real big, and you can't push it through. So, um, uh, since you're you're turning that over air over faster, yeah, you need to you need you need bigger pipes. Adam, does that answer your question? Yeah, I don't know if it did or not. <laughs> I I guess my it, it's kind of like uh, I assume the since we're not using oil anymore to heat the, you know, you're superheating uh, the air with, with the oil basically. So s since the ground source, uh, you know, warm air that you're creating, I'm assuming that's not as warm as it would be. And I assume overall it makes for a more comfortable living space because you're not putting superheated air into one corner of the room. Um, right. But you probably need quite a bit more just to bring the temperature of that room up. I guess. Yeah. So yeah, you, you gotta, thinking about it, right? Yeah. So you're yeah, you're not you're not moving uh, you're not moving air over a, a over a really hot heat exchanger that you would get with a with a fossil fuel furnace. You're moving it over a, a, a coil, and that coil is a lot cooler. So yeah, you, you have to move more more air to move more heat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Um, Jerry said, I think that the did you say the unit installed in this house was the Geostar Sycamore, correct. Which is a variable speed unit. Cor correct. And so Jerry is asking, what's the advantage of installing that over um, a two-stage heat pump? So the, just to let folks know that the Sycamore is the variable stage, and, and um, the Aston is is the forced air unit that is the two-stage, which is another popular choice in our program. Correct. Yeah, so the advantage of the, the variable speed over the two-stage is anytime you've got more controls, um, a two-stage has two, two settings, high and low. Uh, variable speed has got actually a dozen different settings. So if you think about it, the, the system can ramp up and down in a much more um, fine-tuned um, uh, uh, ratio, I guess. Uh, if you think about it, um, think about the, uh, the, uh, the volume knob on your radio. If it, if it had quiet and loud, um, sometimes quiet and loud doesn't quite work. So if you've got a bunch of different notches in the middle, you can dial that in and not only do you get, in this case, higher efficiencies because you need less heat at certain temperatures, 
um, you get better comfort because it can uh, it can deliver uh, a smaller amounts and more uh, dialed in amounts of, of heating and cooling um, into the house. That makes and sense? correct me. I love your I love your examples. Thank you so much. No problem. <laughs> I was just going to say the the Symphony software. Um, you can fine tune how that unit is operating for each individual house. Is that not correct? Yeah, the Symphony, the Symphony is a monitoring diagnostic software. Um, but yes, the, the, the variable speed controls um, uh, run off of the demand of, uh, of the system. So, um, you know, it, the thermostat dictates, uh, you know, sort of what stage it's running in. That's great. Um, this is now, this is jump in quick and say that you know another advantage to the uh, variable speed is is that we can also add zoning uh, to the variable speed and, and create different zones in the house and that's because it's not only the compressor that varies up and down it's also the blower uh, follows suit with that so the the blower the amount of air blowing out um, if, if there's a, if it's on low stage it's going to be a very slow amount of air and then it can ramp all the way up to high stage so it allows us to add at zoning, which which other systems can't, but you know we we don't put zoning on a two stage system, but we very definitely can on on the variable speed. I just thought I'd throw that in there. That's a great point, Hal. Thanks for raising that. That I don't know um, if anybody else has this, but that's often issue in a marriage where um, <laughs> that where you might need a zone for for uh, for he and a zone for she, <laughs> or or just whoever. Um, people seem to run at different temperatures. So that's that's good to know. I was going to say that uh, we often hear from our HeatSmart customers who have these systems installed that they, um, one of the surprising things is that their house is actually warmer than what they kept it at before. So they're using less energy, but enjoying a warmer home or cooler in the summer. So that's quite nice. Other questions? Diana wrote that she couldn't find the enrollment button on the website, but then she found it. So if you're having trouble, let me know. Uh, it's, there's, a, there's a little, if you scroll down from the, on the homepage, there's a little button that says enrollment. So that's where you wanna click and fill out the form. Um, other questions for Matt? He's, oh, let's see, okay. Um, Lauren wants to know more about the water remediation, how you identified where the water was coming in and um, how to get it, how it was solved. And if no one else has a question, I actually have one. And she yes. says, plus, does the heat pump help keep it more dry in the basement? So, um, uh, we, we, okay, so identifying it was easy. Um, there was water on the floor and a lot of it. So it was pretty straightforward. Um, and then uh, dealing with it, basically what we had to do is uh, <clears throat> the water was coming up um, from the foundation uh, through the floor, but also through the walls. So what you have to do is you need to create um, a channel uh, to, to send that water because you're, you're, you're mitigating, you, you're putting the water somewhere else. It's, it's going to come in. Um, we're going to, we're going to deal with it and we're going to make it, you know, take it out rather than just let it cool. So as water pushes up through the slab and pushes in from the walls, uh, it just kind of, uh, you know, hangs out in the perimeter of mostly of, of the, of the uh, basement. So what we did is we, we jackhammered the perimeter of the basement um, and put in a, um, a, a channel, basically a, um, a drainage system in that perimeter um, and then uh, buried it over with, with concrete and then left a space at the back so the, the wall could drain into that same channel, but we put a, a barrier between that and the wall so we could insulate the wall. So behind the, the, that, that wall in the picture is, is a very small cavity where water can be collected and, and hit the drain and be taken out. Um, uh, it's fairly straightforward in all honesty. It's just, it's, it's a lot of work and it's, it's messy because you're jackhammering in a basement. Um, but uh, it's just basically, you know, the water comes in, we need to put it somewhere and then get it, you know, diverted into the sump pump and have it um, pumped out. Um, 
and then uh, the heat pump uh, keep the, the help keep the basement dry. Uh, the geo system does not affect the basement directly, as there isn't any supply or return air in the basement for the geo system. But uh, the heat pump water heater lends a little bit of help. But really, what keeps the basement dry is the um, the, the air filtration dehumidification um, part that we put into. Um, into the basement, which technically in and of itself is also a heat pump. Um, but that's what keeps the basement dry because you're never going to get all the moisture. Um, no matter how dry you make a basement, there's always going to be some moisture. Um, so we put the system in to kind of um, you know, get the stragglers um, that the basement waterproofing system um, couldn't quite fix. So the entire thing is all, all parts have to work together. That's great. I have a question and a comment. The comment is that um, folks should know that part of the COVID recovery plan from New York State is going to be an amazing offer of 0% financing uh, for heat pumps and home energy efficiency improvements. And you can borrow uh, that money for a period of 5, 10, or 15 years uh, at 0% interest, which is uh, an incredible opportunity. Uh, the application for that is not live yet, but we will be sure to all be letting you know as soon as that does become live, and that's pretty exciting. Um, also that um, a ground source heat pump like the one that was installed in this home, there is a, this year a 26% federal tax credit for ground source heat mm -hmm. systems that, of course, you have to qualify, you have to uh, owe taxes, um, but that can be stretched out over several years. My question, Matt, is I know that um, with a heat pump like that, you can also get domestic hot water. So why did this customer choose to go with the heat pump water heater instead of domestic hot water that's part of the ground source heat pump system? The heat pump water heater was already there. Snug installed it in 2017. Um, so it didn't make sense to redo something that was already done. Uh, so we just, uh -huh. we, just, we just rolled <laughs> with it. That's why. <laughs> so if you currently have a a conventional water heater and want to get a heat pump, a ground source heat pump, you would recommend going with the domestic hot water connected to that ground source heat pump. Yeah, so. there's, there's a couple ways to do, do it. Um, it really is sort of based on, on um, each individual house and each individual homeowner. Um, but yes, there's, there's definitely good ways to do it so you can get your domestic off of the geo. Great, thanks. Um, Jerry has a comment about the kind of spray foam that um, Halco uses and that is um, the only kind of spray foams allowed in the Heat Smart Tompkins program. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, yeah. that spray foam and what differentiates it from other spray sure, foam? Sure, yeah. Um, so uh, we, uh, we only use fourth generation spray foam. Um, and really what, what that means is what it's referring to is the, is the propellant. Um, if you think about a, a, a can of foam or anything in a can, even, to, you know, um, has got some sort of uh, a propellant or, or gas to make it, you know, blow out the end. And um, what that is, is uh, it's actually a, a refrigerant is what it is. So if you were to take a, a you know, a, a can of, uh, you know, great stuff, which, you know, a spray foam, um, there's there's a refrigerant in that can that that makes it so you can propel the uh, the foam. It's it's under pressure, and when you press the thing, it releases the pressure and spits out the foam. Well, um, fourth generation spray foam doesn't use those those toxic um, propellants and those toxic refrigerants that are that are that are used to expel it from the from the end of the gun. Um, it's a uh, it's a low uh, you know, it's got low greenhouse uh, emissions. Um, it's uh, it's it's actually a um, uh, very very clean um, uh, option. A lot of spray foam installers don't use it um, because it's more expensive. Um, plain and simple. Um, if uh, but you know we made a decision years ago that that was really going to be the only option we had just because it just makes sense. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's that's what makes it um, what what fourth generation is versus like you know third generation and the the the, the urea formaldehydes are out there and um, you know some of the nastier stuff that are out there. Um, Lapola makes our spray foam. Lapola isinine is what it is. Yeah, people would most people would be quite shocked to learn that a lot of spray foam applications are actually 
contributing a huge amount to uh, global climate warming, <laughs> yeah. um, even while yeah. saving you on your energy and your home because of the type of spray foam. These HFO spray foam propellants um, <laughs> that um, Halco and Snug Planet use are, um, it's like a, a whole, whole totally different world. So um, when you, if you ever call anybody um, about a spray foam application, please ask them about that. And if they don't understand your question, then you might want to go with somebody else. <laughs> this is um, Hal. I'll just pipe in real quick, just because I can't help myself. But just to give you an idea of the significant difference, these spray foams are all rated with a global warming potential. And your traditional old time spray foam has a glo global warming global warming potential rating of 1000 in this new fourth generation foam that we've been using the last several years that Matt speaks of has a global warming potential of one. So it's one versus 1000. I mean, it's a thousand times more harmful to the environment, a, a traditional just to give you a, I mean, it's that significant. Yeah, not to harp on it, but before we move on, I'll say I read that um, even with the energy savings after 40 years, you wouldn't recoup the damage you had done to the warming, um, uh, using one of those older spray foams with it. And the global warming potential is a thousand or even higher. So it's actually pretty bad. Hopefully New York State's gonna get ahead on the regulation and everybody will be required to use these spray foams soon. Um, we're really hoping the DEC takes that on and it looks like they may be looking at it. So it's uh, 1245 exactly, which is the length of time we said our webinar would run. But uh, Jonathan and Matt and Hal and I are happy to stay on longer if folks have more questions. But um, I just want to take a moment to thank everybody for being here. And please tune in on Thursday for um, a great, another great home um, upgrade by NP Environmental. Um, this webinar will be put up on our YouTube channel and on our website in a few days after um, we get it downloaded and um, edit out. Uh, me unmuting people and and my and answering my cell phone. <laughs> so a few technical difficult difficulties along the way, all of us working from home, but we're doing our best. So thank you all so much. And uh, Matt is just a great presenter. What a great uh, transformation of that house. Um, it's pretty exciting to see what can be done. Good stuff. Um, I'll also mention to folks that um, there are special incentives for low to moderate income house homeowners available. And um, a lot of them are really significant, like that heat pump water heater um, that installs for just installed prices a little bit under $3,000. Um, quite a number of incentives that can all be piled on top of each other. And we've been able to see homeowners who are lower moderate income homeowners get those installed for under $500. So a humongous savings. And then they have a piece of equipment that saves them money every day from then on. So it's pretty exciting. Was that another question in the chat or just people saying thank you? I think just okay. a lot of- a lot Looks of, like a lot yeah. of praise for you, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> um, really well done. Hopefully when this pause is over, we can get a home tour in that house and people can see it up close and personal. Maybe. Yeah. That's up to them. <laughs> of course. Of course. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day.